Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. I want to do something that I alluded to in a previous video at some point. I mentioned that I wanted to design and build a discrete audio amplifier circuit. Now I'm not saying a complete amplifier in a case and everything. I'm just talking about design the circuit and lay out a board and potentially even make it available as a kit for people to buy. I'll have to see how this goes. You know, if there's not a lot of interest in it, it may just die on the vine. So, you know, hopefully people are interested in this and uh, it can turn out to be something very interesting. So let's get on with some of the initial thoughts here on this circuit. And the first thing here, I want to have a 50 watt of clean power before clipping into 8 ohm load. Design minimum. It'll be a linear class AB type amplifier design. Okay, so why am I saying 50 watts? Why not a 100 watt? Why not a 200 watt amp? You know, big numbers attract type thing. Well, not for me. I think in a home listening situation with about 95% of the speakers available, 50 watts is more than enough. Now, if you need a lot more power for, you know, PA type, or you just want a loud party type system, you really need to look to something that's over 100 watts, maybe even 200 watts, and uh, efficient speakers as well. But this will be a nice hi-fi listening system with what I consider plenty of power. Another design goal is this circuit will have to be unconditionally stable thermally and electronically. In other words, it's not, you know, it's playing into a capacitive load within reason. I don't want the thing to turn into an oscillator. I don't want the thing to thermally run away due to bad design or something like that. So it's got to be tested out to be unconditionally stable. The amplifier must be safe using it with a 4 ohm reactive load. In fact, I'm designing it to be safe down to 2 ohms resistive, so that gives enough headroom so it can be used with 4 ohm reactive loads, and we'll look a little further into that later. So if you did want a little more power out of this amplifier, you could use it with 4 ohm highly efficient speakers, and you'll get very high SPLs. But the design of this will be flexible in that you could use somewhat higher supply voltage and get more power with an 8 ohm load as well. The amplifier will have current limit protection, so you know in the event that you know you accidentally touch the wires together when you're connecting a speaker or something like that, uh, hopefully you do it with the power off. But you know it, it'll have current limit just in case to protect the. Uh, output transistors. Well it goes without saying it will have low distortion across the power and frequency band. When you have low harmonic distortion across the frequency band that means the other types of distortions like intermodulation will be low as well since distortion is born out of nonlinearities and if you have the harmonic distortion very low the other distortions will be low as well. Of course, everything will have to be tested. This amplifier is going to use common parts and use a reasonable design. What I mean by that is I'm not going to use some unobtainium parts, you know, something that might go obsolete or it's expensive. You know, I want to use common parts. In fact, many of them will be substitutable. So if you can't find this particular part, you can just use another part that's close enough in uh, characteristics that you can put it in the circuit without any uh, undesirable effects on the amplifier. Now here's what I mean by reasonable design. I want a circuit that's not overcomplicated. You know, we're not trying to get the last mile here. If you read the amplifier design book, from Bob Cordell, for example, you know he's trying to make an amplifier 
that gets extremely low distortion at 20 kilohertz. And that's really excellent because it shows his design prowess. Yeah, it shows that we can make an amplifier with very, very low distortion. However, to me, that's a bit overkill. Do you really need such low figures when it's been showing that the average person really can't hear distortion in music at even over 1%. I'm not saying my amplifier is going to have that high of distortion. No, it's not. It's going to be a low distortion amplifier. But I don't see going the extra mile with extra parts and expense to reach such low levels. I think it's unnecessary. You know, the harmonics in the music at the very high end of the spectrum is extremely low and you know the do distortion of the amplifier that I'm thinking of designing is still going to be low and when, when you have something very low already and the distortion is very low it's just it doesn't make sense to go into that expense so that is the basics of this circuit now let's take a look uh, what I'm going to do here with this video. It, I, I want to make this video in stages. It's not going to be contiguous or anything like that. I, I'm going to spread out the videos as I have time and s to sit down and work on this thing. So uh, what I'm talking about in this first video here is the initial design ideas and goals and that's what I kind of talked about before. And in future videos we'll, I'll proceed with the circuit and uh, move on from there. Basic circuit design and test. Well, I have to start building parts of the circuit out and testing them and, you know, start connecting them together and see how they perform. And then I'll finalize that initial design and test. I'll put it on a uh, one of those perforated circuit boards and try to lay it out real nice test it out and see if I have something that I can proceed with. Next is to lay out an actual circuit board and order for prototypes. Then I'll get that board assembled and you know run all these tests, stability, distortion and all that good stuff. Might even have it peer reviewed by somebody with equipment and audio amplifier design knowledge. I don't know about that. I'm just thinking here as I go along. Um, let me move the camera a bit so I can get this lined up. Next is test a prototype board and tweak if necessary. Now we have the prototype made. It's been tested. The distortion. We might. I might find that I need to tweak a value of a resistor here or there, or maybe make a minor change. And this is the point that will happen. And once that's done, we'll finalize the board and the bill of material, and we'll go from there. You know, this is the point I can decide, well, do I want to make this a kit that people can buy and build? I can just sell the boards plain. They can buy their own parts, or I can you know, order a bunch of parts and boards and uh, put them on a little plastic bag and make them available for sale. Uh, everything will be free as far as you know the design schematic but if I sell anything tangible like a board or you know the components of course I'll have to you know ask for money for that. One thing I would like to say at this point is if I do offer this as a kit don't expect it to be a ten or twenty dollar like a cheap Chinese kit or something like that. You know, I'm not China. I'm not going to use fake or cheap parts. I'm going to get parts from a place like DigiKey. You know, buy them in bulk might save me a little bit, but it's not going to be a, a cheapo kit. I can offer the PC board alone, and you can populate it with what you want. But if I offer it as a board with the components, then yeah, it's not going to be an inexpensive kit. Okay, well I shot about 40 minutes of unedited video and I decided to break it up. It's getting quite long. So in the next installment I'll begin looking at the design of the circuit. I need to figure out what's my supply rail voltage is going to be, um, 
look at current in the output transistors running with a 4 ohm reactive load have to deal with that and things like that and uh, move on to beginning the design of the circuit so at, at this point I have to ask you the audience watching this is this something you'd be interested in not necessarily as buying a kit but just you know watching the video and going along through it or maybe you might be interested in the kit I don't know so yeah leave your comment down below but I'll wrap it up here and uh, again thanks for watching